Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's words to you today. Now, I know we're coming to the end of the month of June, and that is half the year 2021. Praise God. How has 2021 been? Let me tell you this. You don't rate your journey in life according to the physical things that you have or you have possessed, that will be a very wrong judgment. You judge yourself according to how much obedience you have shown towards your assignment. You see, if you rate yourself by possessions, you will always think you are losing out. I'm giving you this charge so that you set your mind straight even before we go into the broadcast. Praise God. So don't judge yourself by the things you possess or don't judge people by the things they possess. Jesus himself said a man's life does not consist of the abundance of things which he possesses. So don't start counting, oh, throughout this year, I thought by now I should have bought a car, but I've not bought a car yet. No, 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 no. What are the instructions God gave you for the year? How well have you kept them? If you keep them, see, let me tell you this, car, all those physical things will naturally gravitate towards you as you need them. So are we ready to go into today's broadcast? Remember what the Lord commanded us to do on a daily basis? Are you ready? Let's call for our, our daily bread. Are you ready? Say, Lord, just say it after me. Say, Lord Jesus, you commanded us to ask for our daily bread. So right now, I demand from the Lord my daily bread for today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. See, the anointing of God's Spirit is working already in your life. And guess what? A miracle is going to come your way today. Praise God. Now, we thank you, Father. We bless you. Your truth is being made known in our hearts. And I declare right now, burdens are being lifted. Yokes are being destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now we've been on a series, the purpose, the hope and the manifestation of God's calling in our lives. And we've been on that for a while. And I'm trusting God will round up um, as the month is rounding off. Now there's a reason God gives us this. We don't cook up these things we teach. God has a program. And then according to his program, he begins to set our minds right. So the Bible says precept must be upon precept. Line must be upon line. Here a little, there a little. Why? Because when God is working with you, everything has to be solid. Then he can now rest his great power or blessing upon your life. Sometimes we, we are too concerned about give us power, give us blessing, give us power. But the material that is asking is not balanced yet. So if God releases his blessing upon your life, you're gone. You can't continue. You can't continue working with him. Some people are in this just to break even. You know, the moment they break even or what we call over here, hammer. The moment they hammer and that's it. God will not even have time for them again. Say, Lord, thank you. I can take it up from here. No, that's not how this works. This is a lifetime journey. Now, when I mean a lifetime journey, it's a journey into eternity. It's a journey into eternity. Praise God. So listen, don't just think that I am in this thing waiting, and that's the mistake a lot of people, waiting for a miracle to happen so that I will rejoice and say, yes, and then sort myself out. No, this is a lifelong trip. Everything must be right. God leads us in the path of righteousness. That's what the Bible says. He leads us in the path of righteousness. 
and he does it for his name's sake. Praise God. So we keep our covenant with him and then he keeps his covenant with the world. Jesus prayed a prayer in John chapter 7. He said, Father, I pray that they will be one as we are one. Then he made a very powerful statement. He said that the world may know that thou hast sent me. Think about it. So Jesus was concerned for the world to know that God sent him. And Jesus is talking to God now and he says, let them be one as we are one. Now when that happens, the world will now know that you sent me. See? Like I always tell people, the calling of God in our lives is not just for us. The calling of God in our life is for eternity. You start your journey, but then God is looking at your whole life, not just you, the seed after you. He is looking at your life from here to the end of the world. And that's how God blesses. When God blesses a man, he blesses him. Now, his desire is that the man's the man will leave. Now, understand something here. That blessing he puts on a man, he, it will go on for eternity. Because all what we are doing has an end. And they say, the end doesn't necessarily mean when one person dies. No, the end means the end, when the world comes to an end. The world will surely come to an end. Now, when I mean the world, I mean this world will surely come to an end. A day will come when every man is going to give account. Now, it's, it's so amazing. <laughs> Let me tell you this. This will amaze you, but this is the truth. You know, God created, the Bible lets us know in Genesis chapter 1 that God made man in his image and after his likeness. And then he put him in the garden of Eden. And life began there. Do you know life was suspended after Adam and Eve sinned? It was suspended. Everything we are doing right now is in preparation to live life. Everything we are doing. This is not the life that God has really, that God really intended for us to live. No, it's not. When everything ends, then Satan will be taken out of the way. All the false people will be taken out of the way according to the Bible. And then life will now begin. Then we will now know the intention of God for the earth. <laughs> you, know, you know, some people, some people ask this question. In, in, in another life, I want to know you. I want to be your friend. Listen, <laughs> life is not ending. But the world will come to, come to an end. This world that we know will come to an end. And when it comes to an end, See, what God is going to do is going to renew everything. Now, what do I mean renew everything? It's not like we'll just wake up and see a new heaven and a new earth. Everything is set. No, praise God. No. Of course, this as we earth as we know it, a lot of things we see today, they are all going to be destroyed. What is going to be destroyed? Everything. Now, it's, listen, it's not everything on earth that will be destroyed. But everything that God did not plan for will be destroyed on the earth. So when those seasons come, for example, you read the book of Revelation and you see terror, you see war taking place, and you see all those destructions taking place that you can imagine. Hey, listen, it is not everything that will be destroyed. Only those things that God did not command. That's what will be destroyed. Can I shock you some more? Can I shock you some more? This is, this is to churches and pastors now. A lot of churches that will be built or that are being built will not stand in that time. Either they will be destroyed or, see, at that time, you won't call them churches. Maybe they'll be used for another purpose. Sometimes we use these things to judge. 
And for example, we say, oh, look at some nations that were Christian nations before. Now look at all the churches they have been converted to something else. And we forget something that it's all part of the science of the end time. Yeah, it is. You see, because John said, when he looked at the new city, I want you to follow me now. When he looked at the new city that came down from heaven, he looked at it and then he observed something. That there was no temple there. And I can just imagine what went through John's mind. You know, when you see something God is doing, the first thing you want to look out for is, where is the place of his worship? If this city can be this beautiful, then where is the place of his worship? I want to see it. And he began to scan through the city. And he didn't see a temple. He said, whoa, what an error. <laughs> hey, there's a big mistake here. What mistake? He forgot to build a temple for the Lord in this city. And then the angel talking with him said, oh, Oh, is that what you're looking at? Say, nah, there is no temple there. Why? Because the Lord himself is the temple. <laughs> so there will be no place of gathering that we are gathering to go and worship God. Nah, all what we do now is not the real thing. I'm telling you the truth. It's not the real thing. When we, when we stand in that season, we are going to be the temple. So it's very simple. If he cannot live in you, he cannot live in you. If you are not a temple, then he cannot live in you. That's why the Bible says we are his temple. So he dwells in us. So, so people want to have... Now, not, not because at that day everybody will just have an automatic knowledge of God. No, there are people who will still be growing. Yeah. But you see, at that point, every one of us will be sharing our testimonies now, sharing our experiences with God. And that's how those around us will be learning. That's how those around us will be growing. <laughs> Thank you. Now, you, now you, you think of this thing like, oh, ah, are you serious? We know when, hey, I was telling you something. When God blesses a man, he is looking at all of eternity. That's why God could say concerning Abraham, I know him. He will command his children and his household after him to keep justice and righteousness so that I will bring to pass the thing that I have said concerning Abraham. How, how then will the children of Abraham's keeping, uh, how then will the, the, the keeping of justice and righteousness by the children of Abraham make God fulfill what he said promised Abraham? And that's how life is. It's not just about you. You live a righteous life before the Lord. Do all things right. And then don't forget that you need to nurture your children. You need to nurture them to do the same. Why? If you don't nurture them, you will lose your blessing. If you don't live right before the Lord, you will lose your blessing. If you live right before the Lord, and you are not concerned about the seed after you. God is always concerned about the seed after you. You are not concerned about the seed after you. You just think, me, I'm living my life. If they want to serve God, they can serve God. No, sir. No, no, no. You must command. And now commanding doesn't mean flogging them. Commanding means showing an exa a strict example for them to follow. And that's why the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness for his children's children. So you live a life that your children's children will be proud about. You live a life that they will come and like, wow, granddaddy was this, like, whoa, I want to be like granddaddy. And they begin to follow your footsteps. I'm telling you the truth, you are establishing the blessing of God in your life. Take for example a man like Samuel. Samuel was so anointed. The Bible says his word never fell to the ground. But you know the amazing thing about Samuel? He wasn't a blessed man. Sad to say, but it's the truth. Our time is up. I just, had, I just felt I should share these thoughts with you. And so you begin to think about your life again. God bless you. I'll see you.
tomorrow. For those of you that join us at the lunch hour prayer meeting, I'll see you at 12 noon. God bless you. Bye-bye.